So if you're watching this video, then you're practicing how to find evidence in a text to support a conclusion. This is all about what goes on in your head while you're reading. So for me to teach it to you, i got to show you what goes on in my head while I read. I'm going to use this book, The Call of the Wild by Jack London. It's a really famous book, and people who know a lot about literature say it's really well written, so lots of kids have to read it in 8th or ninth grade anyway. It's also an adventure story, which I really like. It takes place during the gold rush over 100 years ago and it takes place in the deep, snowy woods of western Canada. Now I'm old, but I'm not a hundred years old, and I'm from the south, so I don't know much about snowy woods. This book takes me somewhere I've never been before and teaches me about ways of life that aren't like mine. In this first scene, the dog Buck has just been kidnapped from his happy home. Some people want to turn him into a sled dog. He doesn't know where he is. For two days he was in a cage with no food or water, and he's determined to fight back the moment someone lets him out of his cage. This is the scene where someone lets him out. Now while we read the scene, we're going to be looking for evidence to support a conclusion. The conclusion that we're going to try to support is, the man beats Buck to teach him to obey. I follow three steps when I'm supporting a conclusion. First, I focus on the exact meaning of the conclusion. I ignore everything else. Second, I look for evidence of the conclusion in the text. And third, I look at the evidence I found and decide which is stronger and which is weaker. So first I got to make sure I really understand the conclusion, the exact meaning of the conclusion. I think it's going to be pretty obvious if the man is beating Buck or not, so I don't think that's what I'm going to be looking for evidence for. I think I'm looking for the second part of the conclusion, teaching him to obey. There's lots of reasons somebody could beat a dog. Maybe they're just a bully or angry or emotional, or maybe they want to kill the dog for some reason, but I'm going to try to put all those reasons out of my mind and just focus on somebody teaching the dog to obey, and that's what I'm going to look for evidence for. So now while I read, I'll show you what's going on in my head as I find evidence. Sometimes I'm not sure if it's good or evidence or not, so i got to like think about it while I'm reading, and I'll show you what goes on in my head. This is what you should do when you read. Four men gingerly carried the crate from the wagon into a small, high-walled backyard. Remember, Buck's inside a box or like a cage, so that's what the crate is. A stout man with a red sweater that sagged generously at the neck came out and signed the book for the driver. That was the man, Buck Devine, the next tormentor, and he hurled himself savagely against the bars. The man smiled grimly, brought a hatchet and a club. So the man smiled, so this is a pretty good clue that he's not angry or emotional, so it's telling me what he's not, but it's not telling me that he's trying to teach also, it says he brought a hatchet and a club, and that shows me he's going to beat Buck, but again, it's not telling me why. It's not telling me that he's trying to teach him to obey. Buck was a red-eyed devil. He drew himself together, hair bristling, mouth foaming, and a mad glitter in his bloodshot eyes. Straight at the man, he launched his 140 pounds of fury, surcharged with the pent passion of two days and nights. In midair, just as his jaws were about to close on the man, he received a shock that checked his body and brought his teeth together with an agonizing clip. He whirled over, fetching the ground on his back and side. He had never been struck by a club in his life and did not understand. With a snarl that was part bark and more scream, he was again on his feet and launched into the air. And again the shock came and he was brought crushingly to the ground. This time he was aware that it was the club, but his madness knew no caution. A dozen times he charged, and as often, the club broke the charge and smashed him down. So, the man keeps waiting for Buck to jump at him before he beats him. This is evidence that the man's not trying to kill Buck or hurt him. If he were, he'd keep beating Buck even when Buck was down. But he has some other kind of plan, because he keeps waiting for Buck to jump at him. So, maybe his plan is to teach Buck to obey, so this could be evidence that he's teaching Buck to obey. For the last time he rushed, the man struck the shrewd blow he had purposely withheld for so long and Buck crumpled up and went down, knocked utterly senseless. His senses came back to him, but not his strength. He lay where he had fallen, and from there he watched the man in the red sweater. Well, Buck, my boy, he went on in a genial voice. Genial means friendly, so if he's using a genial voice, then that's another clue that he's not angry and that he's not a bully. Um, so it's telling us what he's not, but still, that's not evidence that he's teaching him to obey. We've had our little ruction, and the best thing we can do is let it go at that. You've learned your place, and I know mine. Be a good dog, and I'll go well, and the goose hang high. Be a bad dog, and I'll whale the stuffing out of you. Understand? So when he says, you've learned your place, and I know mine, uh, that's a clue that he was trying to teach Buck something. If Buck learned, then somebody had to be teaching him. Um, so that's pretty good evidence. So that was a lot of evidence in that section. Some of it was strong evidence for my conclusion, and some of it was weak evidence for my conclusion. And that brings us to step three, which is decide which of your evidence is stronger and which is weaker. If you got this question on a test, it might look like this. 
which of the following is the best evidence that the man beats Buck to teach him to obey? So A, the man is calm, cool, and has a genial voice. Remember, genial means friendly, so this shows us that the man isn't angry or he's not a bully. Um, so this shows us what the man isn't, and it shows us what he's not trying to do. But it doesn't prove that he's trying to teach Buck to obey. So this is evidence, but it's weak evidence. B, the man has a hatchet and a club in his hands. Now remember, this shows us that the man's going to beat Buck, but that was pretty obvious. It doesn't do anything to show us why he's beating Buck. It doesn't show us that he's trying to teach him to obey. So I would have to say that this is not evidence. C, the man says, you've learned your place, and I know mine. Remember, when the man says to Buck, you've learned your place, that's a pretty big clue that the man was trying to teach Buck something. So as far as evidence about teaching Buck to obey, this is really strong evidence. And D, the man works at a dog training school. This wasn't anywhere in the text. So I would have to just say this is not the right answer because it's not in the text. So the best answer, the best evidence is C. So to wrap up, just a quick review of what we did. When you get a conclusion to prove, first, focus on the exact meaning of the conclusion. Second, read the text and look for clues. And third, decide which clues are stronger and which are weaker. So now follow these three steps with any book that you're reading, especially if you get a question about evidence on a test. And uh, if you liked the book The Call of the Wild by Jack London, definitely check it out. It's a short book, like 140 pages, and it's really exciting to read what happens to Buck the more time that he spends out in the wild.